and I would like to bring the mentee of the year, Mr. Barion Boyle Jr., back up to introduce the speaker for this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to let you, all of you know that we are in for a treat today. Our featured speaker this afternoon is one of the most dynamic and sought after speakers in the country. And it's an honor to introduce him this afternoon. Reverend Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant is a philanthropist, author, motivational speaker, and entrepreneur, as well as the most prolific and equivalent orators of our time. He is the senior pastor of the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Lithonia, Georgia. Dr. Bryant is a graduate of Morehouse College and of Duke University. He received his doctorate of ministry degree of the, gradu of the graduate the Theological Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Dr. Jamal Bryant. Thank you so much. Can I ask uh, everybody to please put your forks down for one moment? I ask that you'll push the uh, chicken to the side for just one moment. Uh, can I ask everybody to please stand to your feet? Let's change the energy in the room. Everybody stand to your feet right where you are. Would you give a thunderous applause, make some noise, and clap your hands all over this room? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let me hear you in the back. Make some noise, clap. You may be seated. I am uh, so grateful for the privilege. My father, Bishop John Richard Bryant, is uh, 79 years of age, uh, one of the most powerful preachers I've ever heard. Um, whenever it is that uh, I speak, he always calls me and asks, uh, Jamal, how did it go? Uh, and I want to be able to call him when this luncheon is over. And uh, he asks me invariably, how did it go? And I'll be able to tell my father, I had him on their feet in the first minute. <laughs> clapping and making noise. So thank you so very much uh, from robbing me from being a liar to my dad. Uh, ordinarily, when you hear about a recall in elections, uh, it is about uh, trying to extract somebody out of office who no longer, no longer deserves to be there. Uh, 100 black men made a recall not to put somebody out, but to bring somebody back in. Uh, because they recognize the effective and powerful leadership in one Mr. Thomas W. Dorch. I want us to thank God collectively for a role model of leadership for this age, for this era, and for this hour. Come on, we can do better than that. Uh, let me uh, salute all of uh, the honorees uh, on this day. I uh, humbly uh, serve as uh, the national chaplain for 100 black men. Uh, and as soon as this program is over, it is my business uh, to call us into executive section to find out who is the national secretary for 100 black men. You'll notice there is a typographical error in your program uh, for collegiate 100 of the year. Uh, and if you'll look over on the right panel, you'll see uh, that Howard University is listed above Morehouse. That is a mistake. Uh, and we will address that as soon as this is over. Uh, to all of those who uh, serve in all of uh, your varying capacities, uh, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to share and to be able to speak out loud. Uh, in the Journal of uh, Developmental Disorders, uh, tear-jerking data has disclosed that the rate of uh, black and Hispanic children being diagnosed with autism has exceeded for the first time in history the amount of Caucasian kids who have the same disorder. In the midst of the pandemic, it has not just been a hop, but it has been a whooping jump of 43 to 77 percent of those who have been diagnosed with autism are now black boys. Autism refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behavior, as well as speech and nonverbal communication. The varieties are vast as it morphs out of both genetic and environmental factors. Because there are a spectrum of nuances, each individual has a different set of strengths and challenges. 
the way they think, the way that they learn, the way that they problem solve is not uniform. They are those who can fly through complex math computations while others can draw just based off of memory because their comprehension is eclectic. It should serve as a reminder that they should not be dismissed as being impossible or ignorant, but they throw for all of us a challenge of stretching our ideas and how it is that we manage. Delay does not mean dysfunction. The mother of an autistic son wrote a poem for parents in the same position entitled The Popcorn Principle. It reads, popcorn is prepared in the same pot, in the same heat, with the same oil, and yet the kernels don't pop at the same time. Don't compare your child with other children for their turn to pop is coming. I came to challenge the 100 black men as much as I have to challenge the black church that we have a responsibility to enlarge our tent, to make sure that we are doing mentorship also for our young black boys with special needs. If we are just doing it the regular way, we are missing a complete demographic that is deserving of our love, our care, our attention, and our instruction. The reality is we have all of them in our community, and if any of them are overlooked, then we are in fact blind to a reality that is profound to our community. 100 black men, I hope you will take the challenge that as we are mentoring young black boys that we do not neglect young black boys with special needs. If you agree with that, would you please give an applause of affirmation that we do better, that we do more, and that we go further. For some reason, I couldn't get this poem out of my head. And so I got home and I developed a hankering for popcorn that I couldn't shake. I went down in my kitchen, searched the cabinet, and foresaw, found a bag in order to make some. I threw the popcorn in the microwave, placed the setting on high, put the timer at three and a half minutes, and I began to pace waiting for it to happen. And while I was pacing, I heard God correct me and say, Jamal, what did you put in the microwave? I said, I put popcorn. He said, no, you didn't. Check again. What did you put in the microwave? I said, God, I put popcorn in the microwave. He said, Jamal, no, you didn't. Check again. He said, Jamal, you did not put popcorn in the microwave. You put kernels in the microwave but you called it what you wanted to become. The 100 black men stand on the ethos that they cannot become it until they see it. But I also believe they cannot become it until they are called it. We have to begin calling our young men what we want to see them to be that they are not just going to go to college on athletic scholarships, but they're going to go to college for engineering and for computer science and for medicine and for law and for being public servants because we see more in them than the society that they are a part of has ever seen. The director, the owner, Dave Thomas of a Wendy's fast food chain, said that his greatest regret in life is naming the fast food restaurant after his daughter, Wendy, because she's grazed her whole life under the pressure of having to live up to a level of wealth that she had not amassed. Can you imagine that kind of white privilege that suggests the pressure and the privilege of access to capital is their greatest pressure for their children?
Our children's greatest pressure is will their parents have to take out a second mortgage to go to college? Our children's greatest pressure is will they get killed for wearing a hoodie? Our children's greatest pressure is will they be shot just for being in a supermarket in Buffalo, New York? Our children's greatest pressure is assuming that they are criminals and not being chemists. Our responsibility as black men is to put pressure on black boys that their responsibility is to go further than their fathers and to go further than any man in their family. Let us continue to put our foots on their neck and say pull those pants up, tie those shoes, speak in complete sentences. There is more to you than you have ever seen and we would rather you feel the pressure from positive successful black men than the pressure of being swallowed and flushed in the prison pipeline. I want the men in this room to apply pressure to the boys in this room. Clap your hands if you expect them to go to college. Clap your hands if you expect them to be homeowners. Clap your hands if you expect them to be fathers. Clap your hands if you expect them to be dutiful husbands. Clap your hands if you want them to have a savings account. Clap your hands if you want them to be registered voters. Clap your hands if you want to see them go back to HBCUs. Don't raise a generation of entitled middle class black Negroes. Raise them up and understand there's a responsibility to give back to the black boys that don't have their chances and don't have their privilege. Let them know it's a privilege to stay in a hotel. It's a privilege to be able to order room service. It's a privilege to sit at a banquet when their grandfathers had to shuck peas and had to make chicken and had to mow lawn and they sit here with neckties. It's not because they're so great and brilliant. It's because of the nameless and faceless black men who went before them who kept their head held up high that even while they were grown and were called a boy, they knew that they were still men. I need us to put some pressure on these young men. If you agree with it, clap your hands even now and let's apply the pressure. You have to pay attention to the fact that when kernels begin to change, so does what's holding it. When you put it in the microwave, the bag is flat, but it doesn't stay in that position when there is growth. America has to change when our young men put a mandate of change. There's a book that I want to offer to all of the young men who are present. How the book is entitled, What If Obama Had Sons? What If Obama Had Sons? The author's name is William Porter, and he argues how would the landscape of American perspective have changed if instead of two daughters, Obama had two sons? Two sons raised in the White House, wearing ties going to private school, sitting with heads of state, realizing what etiquette is supposed to be, having a mandate for excellence. It would change the stratosphere of American perspective to know that our young men are reared up for leadership. Young men, if you can hear my voice, you are the sons of Barack Obama, but you are also the sons of Thurgood Marshall. You are the sons of A. Philip Randolph. You are the sons of Martin Luther King Jr. You are the sons of Andy Young. And you will never be the sons of Clarence Thomas. I declare unto you that there is greatness inside of you and you've got to rise to that challenge and meet it. The late Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays from Morehouse College said that there's a crown above our head that we have got to grow tall enough to wear because you are not yet the size of your assignment, you are not yet the size of your call, and you are not yet the size of your destiny. There's a principle that we learn from popcorn, and that principle from popcorn that we learn is that popcorn only grows under two conditions. One is heat, 
and the other is pressure. Popcorn will never manifest as long as the microwave door is open. In order for it to grow, the door has to be closed. Young men, please do not become depressed or dissuaded when you are met by closed doors. The old saying is, if a door shuts in your face, go down the hall and knock on another one because maybe that was not your door. Black men have a history of thriving and moving and persevering even in the face of closed doors. Can you imagine that you would not be here if it were not for pressure? We know as a people how to thrive under pressure. The pressure of being in the bowels of the ships of the Middle Passage. The pressure of not being able to vote unless we knew how many bubbles were in a bar of soap. The pressure of having to memorize the Constitution in the face of those who couldn't even read themselves. The pressure of having property but having no dignity. The pressure of a Constitution labeling you to be three-fifths of a human being. The pressure of having your churches with burning crosses on the outside. The pressure where it is that it was legal for them to lynch black men in the words of Nina Simone as if they were strange fruit. The pressure of barking dogs and relentless fire hoses. But out of that pressure came the original gangster rap music. The original gangster rap music was before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. The original gangster rap music is I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. I'm gonna keep on talking. The original gangster to rap music. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or with a song, then my living is not in vain. I know you're dealing with pressure, but you have no excuse to quit. I know life is not easy, but you have no excuse to throw in the towel. I know things are not ideal, but there's still an expectation that you are going to rise to the top. This is your popcorn principle and whenever it is that you take a bag of popcorn out of the microwave look in the bottom of the bag and invariably you will find kernels that did not pop and if you inspect them you will discover that the kernels that did not pop are the kernels that had no oil on them I want to suggest to you that the young men who will not make it possibly to their greatest level of destiny is, are those young men who never had a mentor who never had somebody speaking to their life, who never had somebody to shape their consciousness and their being. In the midst of this COVID pandemic, three black men became billionaires. What is your excuse not to become a millionaire? Use your gift, use your mind, use your creativity, use your call, but whatever you do, don't use an excuse. An excuse is a tool for the incompetent, and if you are here in Hollywood, Florida, you are given all of the tools that are needed and necessary for you to make it. Scotty Colbert, while we were down at Morehouse, we understood that when we went to the cafeteria for breakfast, wasn't no waffles, wasn't no French toast, wasn't even no oatmeal. All they had is what you found in the canteen this morning because the restaurant was closed. When you go to the cash register and they ask you, what do you want for breakfast? Tell them I want Rice Krispies because that's the only thing that snaps, that crackles, and pops.